Hi, this is Chuck Eddy. I'm a lifelong Republican. I'm recording this in Lexington, Kentucky. I grew up in Pennsylvania, met my wife at college in Wisconsin 50 years ago. And I got to tell you, Donald Trump must go. I'm a lifelong moderate Republican. I voted Republican except twice in 1980. I voted for John Anderson, Republican congressman from Rockford, Illinois, who ran as an independent. In 1992, I voted for Ross Perot, who ran as an independent. I shared his concern about the national debt and still do today. Now, 2016 was the first time I voted for a Democrat for president. Donald Trump, frankly, scared the bejesus out of me and still does. I will campaign for, donate to, make calls for, and gladly vote for Joe Biden, and here's why. In 2016, Trump campaigned on racism, misogyny, attacks on ethnic and religious minorities, disabled people, and so on. In his kickoff speech in Trump Tower, he attacked Mexicans as drug dealers and rapists, said he would build a wall to keep them out, and he would make them pay for it. Update. That's one of his 20,000-plus lies. Mexico isn't paying for any part of the wall, and except for five new miles, all the rest of his wall building is updating existing walls. He lied to his voters, and he still is. He's actively tearing down our 244-year-old democracy and 230-year-old constitution. So here's a bunch of things about him that I'm not happy about. He hasn't released his taxes like every other president since Nixon. Said he would. He lied. He didn't divest himself of the companies of his companies, and he has spent many millions at Trump Organization properties. We pay for that. That's shameful. He welcomed Russian help in 2016 and is today. He said he believed Putin over our 17 intelligence agencies. He separated children from parents seeking legal asylum as an illegal deterrent. Cruel and definitely against Christ's teachings in my book. He attacked all levels of the executive branch, including maintaining acting cabinet secretaries. He pardoned military war criminals, damaging military morale. And frankly, putting people who are actively serving at risk. And I have a family member who's in the active military. He illegally has been fighting congressional oversight and subpoenas. He abruptly withdrew uh, uh, troops, our troops in northern Syria, exposing our Kurdish allies to Turkey. Transparently, he gave his buddy Erdogan, and I probably pronounced that wrong, permission to go after the Kurds. This situation by, is, by the way, what triggered the resignation of Defense Secretary General Mattis, the only person that I supported in Trump's administration as a good appointment. His individual tax cut was only a little bit for you and me, and that was temporary. 85% was the permanent corporate tax cut, which was for the wealthy and large corporations, the majority of which was used to buy back stock instead of Trump's lie about investment in the economy. And going back to the national debt, that tax cut, which was supposed to pay for itself and did not, is actually adding about one and a half to two trillion dollars to our national debt. COVID-19. He denied, lied, and delayed. He blames China, but it's his response that is killing us. Look at South Korea, who responded to the pandemic when he didn't. Today is August 30th. There are at least 182,535 Americans dead because of COVID-19. My numbers, by the way, are from Johns Hopkins University. There are 323 dead South Koreans from COVID-19. Now, their country is smaller than ours. If both were the same size population-wise, they would have 2,100 deaths. We have 88 times the number of dead Americans as South Koreans. Trump did that. They masked up right away, did testing and contact tracing, and they kept their cases and deaths down. Trump fought all that. There are so many horrible things he has done, but let's close with the Trump 2020 Republican Convention. He illegally broke the Hatch Act by using the White House, broke all norms of political signage, and a god-awful fireworks spelling out his name at the end. And the first cherry on the top is very, very few masks and social distancing at Pence's speech at Fort McHenry. So it's going to be a super spreader of COVID-19. Finally, Trump's acceptance speech at the White House. 
had 1,500 guests. Only a couple of guests had masks and lots of mingling afterwards. So that will be a really big COVID-19 super spreader. You may recall Herman Cain died as a result of catching COVID-19. He attended the Tulsa rally of Trump's where there was no masking, there was no distancing at all. So let me be clear, there's no last straw for me with Trump. I have opposed him and his Trumpian Republican enablers since day one. Please join me in supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to restore our country to the America our ancestors fought and died to create. As President Reagan said, quoting Jesus, Biden and Harris can restore America to be the shining city on the hill. Good night and God bless you. And please vote as if America's future as a democracy depends on it. It does.